Garmin thoughts. Not quite Brexit, but if you haven't hit in the crowd, then you want to exit. It's Garmin thoughts. It's, oof, ah, it's, it's summit. It's something. Is that okay? It's okay. It's better than last week. <laughs> Did I say it right? There's more thought and purpose than last week, anyway. <laughs> Hello guys and welcome back to the third episode of our Cal and Dom Talks Nonsense podcast. And what do we call this podcast? Because what's after lactate uh, test, Cal? What is actually after that? I think we're getting towards friendly territory, aren't we're we? Towards friendly. <laughs> like, are we going to like a, a, a Unibon Premier side? Uh, you know, yeah. we're going to play two XIs and we're going to we're going to sort of see who who fits in the team. And 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 next week we'll know who the, who the actual starting XI is. So first of all, Cal. How are you doing? Good, mate. Yourself? Yeah, I'm absolutely great. Yeah, the uh, podcast, if uh, if we're going to pull back the curtain a little bit, came out today and uh, <laughs> a couple of glitches and a couple of re-edits had to happen, but we got there in the end. Um, but, guys, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to this channel. Um, and also, what we're going to do now is we're going to add the podcast onto the Cal and Dom Talks Nonsense Pod. Is that what it's called? Is that what it's called? The yes, YouTube channel? that's it, mate. I'll put it in the description below. It's definitely hard to say that the first time description as a northern lad. Um, uh, yeah, so if, if anyone likes the video as well, please like it. And also, please get in your gammon thoughts, like we say every time. Please say who you're... Well, not Nink of the Week anymore. We've scrapped that one. That, that bit is RIP. It's gone and it is resting above us. Or below not us, probably. Forgotten. Probably it's probably below us to be honest. First of all, Cal, first qu- second question. Guess the training top. Oh god. I got it this it's week. A, it's a nice one. It is nice. It's not nice um, as in like the team. It it looks Olympic y. Um apparently it's um Slovenia. Slovenia, right. <laughs> we can say I never got that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a training top, to be honest with you. But guys, we will we'll say tell you the the uh, not the formation, but the, the format of this this podcast. So we're going to talk about talk about last episode. Obviously, we're going to talk about the weekend games because we've actually got some weekend games to talk about. Yes. My God, there's football going on. Uh, Kyle's going to talk about a game that he's going to potentially this weekend. Yes, find correct. out what game it is. We're going to talk about the England shirt and our thoughts on that. Random football of the week. <laughs> My personal favourite, honestly, is that I love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gammon thoughts, like we say, we're going to try and push that as much as we can. Uh, nonsense Hall of Fame, which is replacing Nick of the Week, and then we're going to go on the outro. So, how do we think the uh, how do we think the last episode went? Do you know what I thoroughly enjoyed it? I think it was really refreshing after week one to actually have some serious stuff to talk about and get sunk into. Uh, to talk about the Todd Bowley stuff was brilliant and I've been speaking to people all week and opinions are all over the place about yep. that one and uh, and rightly so, but it's brilliant and being able to pick our teams, loved that as well. Uh, and yeah, the England squad, you know, having a quick brush over that was brilliant and all the features, they're always fun, always fun. Yeah, I think I think the the fact that we had a bit bit more of a structure and a bit more of a planning stage and and and, and actual graphics involved this week uh, <laughs> helped a lot. Um, and it, it was yeah, like I say, it felt a, bit, a lot more enjoyable as a as a as a podcast. And we won't do this every time. It's just in pre season we'll talk about the last episode because that's what you got to do in pre season. You got to talk about the last game, how it went, how last training session. You know who who won the lactate? Who won the lactate? <laughs> um, I think the North beat the South, so I'm going to say that I was the James. Right, Moore. okay. <laughs> right, cool. I'm out, I'm out on loan to wherever. I'm taking it. <laughs> I'm out on loan to the championship for the season. And that's fine. Um, so we're going to talk about like the weekend games, and we, we've sort of discussed like before the pod, like which games do we want to talk about? Those are just the Saturday games were pretty poor, weren't they? They weren't. There's not mm. much in terms of talking points and. I think the big one is Leicester versus Spurs. And I remember seeing it half time 3 2. Okay, yes, it's a good game, but a full time 6 2. Carl, what do you think about the game? You know, I watched the game and at full time, you're abs- at half time, sorry, you're absolutely right. It was a really good game. Obviously, the Madison goal. It, it was really, really 
great effort from both teams. They were both trying their absolute best for the victory. And at 3-2 at half-time, I, I wouldn't have been confident betting either side on either of the teams. Uh, second half, it's the story of Leicester's season. You know, if you look at them in depth, they've they've been trying. You can't help them not, you know, they've not been bottling it in a sense of trying. It's just always seems to be that outran or people just find them out and they get to a point where they're in games and, you know, Hyung Min Son being on the bench, by the way, I think that's a yeah, thing of the past, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he came on and obviously did what he did, scored a hat trick, which, yeah, hats off to him. Absolutely fantastic. But um, I think the overwhelming feeling for me regarding Leicester at this point is there's something there. And there's, you look at the team on paper, it's still a good little team, but I personally just believe for Brendan Rodgers, God love him, it's just a match that you can't have anymore. Him and Leicester are just, it's just finished. It's past its sell-by date. Yeah. Uh, I think they're both still in good nick. I think Leicester's team are in good nick and Brendan Rodgers is a manager, the same. But when it comes to that pairing, I think it needs to part ways as of right now. Yeah, like you say, like a, it always happens. It's like a story arc to every sort of managerial managerial process. And um, whether Leicester are, are, are a team that, want to get rid of him right now is it's, it's a weird one to say because we don't actually know what Leicester's policy on sacking the managers are but I will say that it, this stemmed from before the preseason didn't it like the the Thailand owners they are they, they own a airline business so they were one of the, the the sectors that got hit the most during COVID and they have the aftermath of all this so whether or not that's an excuse for them I'm not too sure because Brendan Rodgers finished fifth, fifth and eighth in the last three seasons. And even last season when they didn't really pull up any trees, they ended up finishing eighth, which is a, a testament to Brendan Rodgers in itself. But like you say, Brendan, Lo- Re- Brendan Lo- <laughs> Rodgers looks, he looks fed up, doesn't he? He looks absolutely fed up in the team. And, he, and rightly so, because look at the signings that they made this season. They've, Brought in Wow Wow Faze. Is that his name? Doesn't do it for me. I'm Alex sorry. Alex Spinney's, you know, as a backup goalkeeper. They let go for Farner. Let go of um Kasper Schmeichel out of the back door, by the way. Yeah. After 10 years of service, he's just he, that was a real quiet transfer, weren't it? And Tillyman's looks like a ghost at the minute. He looks like a player that's just sat there ready to ready for a, a, an Arsenal or Man United. He, he looks like a player that uh, that should have gone this summer. That's what he's he looks coasting, like. isn't he? He's just absolutely <laughs> yeah. coasting. But they look so porous and look so so susceptible at the back, don't they? they they've conceded twenty two goals yeah. in seven games, which is the worst since nineteen sixty five. And England didn't even win the World Cup by then, <laughs> you know. Like, <laughs> but you talk about the lack of funding, and and that's that's anyone w- would be upset by it because if Leicester had a, a, an actual depth of a squad in the last three seasons, they, they would have been a top four side. Two yeah. or three seasons ago, they finished fifth twice. They finished third two seasons ago. They should have definitely been in that prim, that, that Champions League. You know, you remember it. It was it was the last game of the season and Chelsea somehow sneaked into it and Leicester didn't get in yeah. there. When you look at their away, when you look at their away um, games, they've had Arsenal, obviously, Chelsea, who aren't great, but they're still a top four or six side. Mm-hmm. Brighton at the peak, lost 5-2, and now Spurs away. So the next game against Forest is a massive one, a huge one, not in terms of just um, where they are in the league because they've only had one point. Obviously, that's not great. But in terms of, because it's an East, East Midlands derby as well. Like, if they yeah. lose that one, he's gone. I think he's gone. Yeah, yeah I, think I think what's, what's interesting, interesting about the... Um, about that fixture in itself, do you remember the cup fixture from last season? Yes. I remember watching that game and credit to Forrest, who was in the championship at the time, and um, they absolutely outclassed Leicester in yeah. every... And Leicester weren't at this point then. They were doing okay at that point. Yeah, yeah. They outclassed them in every essence of the word, if you think football, everything about it battered them and moved on and it's eventually one, faced one. us. One, yeah, 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 yeah. And... It's oh God. They, if something like that happens again, yeah, I'm, I'm personally surprised he's not gone already. Um, I'm, I'm of the camp of he needs to stay a bit longer, but 
Mm. If got, like you say, a four-one again, whew, like there's no way that he's going to survive that, is there? No, no. But he's got the sort of excuse of he's not had anything this this summer, has he? Like I say, no, of and, course, uh, and that's but, something to to factor in. Of course, it is. But exactly, um, exactly. I think when you have a squad like Leicester's, you so you, it's not the worst in the world if you haven't been backed in the summer. You've got to make do and mend, and currently that's not what they're doing. Yeah, there's not been backed, and then there's like just completely given up, isn't there? I think yeah, that's what exactly. it is at the minute. Um, on the flip side, Spurs, do they look like a title mm. challenge, challenge inside? It's strange with Spurs because I watched them against Sport in Lisbon uh, the other night, and they got beat, but the, you know the goals in ninety and ninety three minutes. But um, I thought I, I, I watched them this season, and this, it just seems like I'm not utterly convinced yet. And, you know, the yeah. results speak for themselves. They're right up there, of course they are, but uh, there just seems something about them. That, mm. that Eve Basuma for me, I thought he would be the absolute man for them this season. I thought that transfer for the money that they paid for him as well, I thought, wow, that is a shrewd bit of business. And he hasn't hit the ground running. And Conte came out this week and spoke about he's the one who's struggling the most with the tactics. Oh, really? Not quite got his head round it just yet, which which is a fair comment, to be honest. And, you know, I've heard Jurgen Klopp say that a million times about a player and then they come through and do what they're supposed to eventually. Um, Fabinho being the biggest the biggest one for that. And I remember oh, okay. he was out of the team for a while and then came in. But, uh, yeah, Bissouma for me, I thought, if, if he was in the team now and firing like he was at Brighton and this was all happening, I'd be like, yeah, they have a complete set up there. But, I don't know. There's just something about them that, dare I say, a bit spursy. <laughs> <laughs> you might do, but I, I understand what you mean, like, as in terms of they're just about getting away with it at the minute. Mm. I feel like there's a, a, an, a, an aura of just like, okay, Jesus, like we're just, just about got away with that. And I think listening from Spurs pods, they, they, they think the same thing. And other than the 6-2, and even even this game, when it was 6-2, I feel like they, they even think that they just about got away with this one because they were they were behind twice in this game. So yep. if Leicester weren't as uh, susceptible to back, you'd say that, you know, it, but they are top of the league. Yeah. Apart from one team. Yeah. Which is the next game we're going to talk about, which is Arsenal versus Brentford. Now, this is parallel or... What's the opposite of parallel? Can't, can't. In, in parallel. parallel. <laughs> in parallel. Um, speaking of Arsenal, I uh, made a little premonition. I was speaking to my dad, actually. You'll probably listen to this as well. I uh, shook hands with my dad on a gentleman's bet early doors this season. I think it was after our Fulham game. Okay. No, I think it might have been the second First game week, of the season. Uh, after the second week, I think it was. Um, and I said, if we don't win the Premier League this season, Arsenal will. <laughs> and, what? and I'll... You know, after the um, after the Man United loss, I thought oh, that is so Arsenal that like they build this hype up to this point, and then the first hurdle crashes down. But then yeah. you watch that Arsenal Man United game. But I actually I watched it in a pub, so obviously I was not fully involved. I was no, having a drink with friends. It, watched watched it. it there, and then I thought, Do you know what, I'm going to watch it again. So I watched it back when I went home, and I thought, how on earth have they lost that game? And <laughs> by the scoreline, as well, I thought. Jesus, yeah. God, they played well there. And they, yeah, some unlucky chances. And uh, they are, for me, they look really solid. And I think yeah. the players that they have as well and the age group, I think it's only going one way as well. And I think that's upwards. I'm a massive, massive fan of Arsenal. And yeah, I don't think it's entirely a hype job. I think they're, I think they're going to be okay this season. Yeah, it's a good start to the season, isn't it? And I, I do reiterate the fact that Arsenal should have won that game. Like, um, Odegaard, when he fouled, fouled yeah. that first goal, any other time before VAR, they wouldn't have given that for a foul. Exactly. He didn't at the time. And it was it, it, only when you put it in 0.25 frames. That is, Everything looks given. worse, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. And, and it was a perfectly, you know, it was a perfect goal, perfectly given goal in any other exactly. era of football. Yeah, I don't yeah. think that, like I say, I don't think the hype is um, false. To be fair, I think that we are seven games into the season, eight games into the season now, when they are top of the table. So we are. It's like it's weird. It's such a weird season because yeah, usually by September nineteenth, which is the day that we're doing it on, it's like oh yeah, but the the hype is too real right now. But we're 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 like a third the way. How 
with 38 games, uh, we're nine get well, eight nine we're games. Into it, aren't we? Yeah, we're, we're probably into into, it. It's yeah. like we're almost into November now. It's like a proper stage of the season. But we, I mean, the complete. Um, comparison with this and last season where they lost 3-0 at home away to Brentford where they won they won 3-0 you know yeah Fabio Vieira I will give a little shout out what a finish that was as well yeah. it looks like a real prospect and um, it was a Riley so Vieira does well for Arsenal doesn't it and uh, like yeah. uh, for some reason I have this like little soft spot for Arsenal I'm not too I'm not too sure where it comes from to be I could tell you where it comes from because I'm the exact same and I was speaking to my dad about it actually when I watched the game um Back in the day, that team, that was the team. Yeah. Um, in our our exact age group, I think if you're any later or or younger than us, you, you have a slightly different view in some form. So when, when, when did you start watching football? I was... I started watching football in 2002. Yeah, my first memory, I think my first memory might be that World Cup in 2002, around yes, that Yes, I know point. exactly that. that I yeah. know exactly that one, because in my cupboard there, and if I had time, I'd dig it out. I have, the, yeah. I have the predictions, which I wrote when I was that age. Really? Yeah, still, yeah, you know, the you know, I remember writing down uh, Republic of Ireland 3, Spain mm-hmm. 3, and thinking that, that I, th- I remember that giving me the first game I ever remember. Yeah. And so um, I, I look back at that point, so around, and obviously at that point, that Arsenal team, mate, Oh, um, 2003 4. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, Invincible yeah. speaks for itself, but you Here can name is. every player One on that word. pitch. Yeah, yeah, we can now. We can now. Len- Thierry Henry. No, we're going for the team. Lienz Lehman, Laurent. Ashley Cole. Ashley Cole. Sol Campbell. Yeah. Who's the other one? Was Tony Adams in that squad? Is it a bit after him, the Invincibles? Was it, I thought you- was it Keown? Oh, was it not Colo Torre? It, oh, it could have been actually. It could have been. I think well, it could have been. <laughs> Right, so we got hey, the mids of Roberto uh, Silva. Oh, what a player! <laughs> is it? Is it one Ray Parler? Was neither Ray Parler was knocking around around that term. But I think he was. all these players, obviously, Pires, 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 captain Pires, Pires, Pires Lumber, Lumber, Henry, yeah, yeah, Bergkamp. Exactly, exactly. So that team, Pascal C. <laughs> yeah, and him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that, that team speaks for itself. But I think one thing that always stood out for me as a kid uh, was the kit. I don't know why. Yes. There's just something seriously iconic about the white sleeves, the red top, the O2, Nike. It just always the stuck one as well. I, I'll, even when they've been struggling in recent years, yeah. when they built the Emirates, it's a beautiful stadium. And um, just everything about that club I've always loved. And Arsene Wenger is one of my favourite football people of all time. So I think, Yeah, because he brought that football into our... Yeah, you know, exactly. Without so us I've, even I've always had a soft spot for him. I think a lot of people do. Uh, they might not admit it, but they, they definitely do. And to see them, how they're doing now. My favourite thing about this Arsenal team at the minute is that Mikel Arteta probably, well, he could have and probably should have been sacked about three times before now. Yeah, yeah. And he hasn't been. And now they're reaping the rewards. And yeah. it just makes you think, maybe we should give managers time. Oh my <laughs> maybe God. that's an yeah. idea. Yeah, you so, know what? <laughs> yeah. We should give them time. Maybe that's, that's it. Maybe, and, yeah, maybe I've made up for it. them, to be honest. Maybe they need a team which they need to evolve into their actual like system and exactly. You know, you know. <laughs> Seems crazy, doesn't it? <laughs> CC Watford. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> now, I mean, this is gonna be a dodgy link, yeah. You know? So we talk about the like 2001, 2002 era. In that era, Roy Keane uh, broke somebody's knee. He did. He did. <laughs> it was Harland, and then it was. Alfie Inga Harland. What he didn't break was his cock. Right. So. Yes. <laughs> and, and a part of me wishes he might have gone and done that, actually. Because the fella that we're about to talk about, I, uh, if you've got us, if you follow us on Twitter at Talk Nonsense Pod, you'll have seen I put a little tweet out about five minutes before kickoff um, just saying, how many goals will this man score today? And it was early in Harland. And rightly so, he popped one in for us, didn't he? 16 minutes later. <laughs> Yeah. He's an I've ran freak. out of words. I've ran out of words for the that's guy. That's it. That's it. I, and I think we're all hoping that he wasn't as good as he was. We were going oh Bundesliga attacks. That was the same. I was like, yeah. I hope that you know, like look at look at Jadon Sancho the first season. Look at Kai Havertz. Mm-hmm. Look at Timo Werner. Like they scored twenty goals a season. This guy is an absolute robot. Absolute freak. And. 
He scored 10 goals in seven games. Do you know what my biggest worry uh, about him is at this point now? Um, is The whole talk after he started scoring a few in his first few games was, oh, it's all right, he gets injured mid-season. Yeah, yeah. And I was looking back at a couple of Dortmund games and like looking um, at his stats in those games, and he was actually a lot more involved in the tactics at Dortmund. So he had a lot more touches on the ball <laughs> at City. Really? You've seen you've seen so far at City, his average is what, like 15 touches? Five, and yeah. So he might not be completely tactically aware of City's and Pep Guardiola's, you know, thoughts for the team, but at the same yeah. time, it's working. You wouldn't really want to change it, would you? So if he's touching the ball 15 times per game, not breaking a sweat, probably come off after a hat trick, things like this, and then mm. he's got a big fat break when everybody's battling out of the World Cup. Right, okay. It just... Oh. I've just thought of something, okay. What we need to do is we need to manifest Haaland. Not a serious injury. We don't want like a Mark Lowen hamstring, but like a little metatarsal. Do we need yeah. something, just something like there, like a... <laughs> Do it. <laughs> a little uh, an inconvenience to him. Like, what, is, what, what is the most injury pro like thing you can have without it being like because the thing <laughs> I think the issue is right now is we'd love Haaland to be in the Premier League, but just not for City. Any yeah, other team, that, just any yeah. other team, we'd love him to be there. And uh, even if he went to Real Madrid, we're like, yeah, you know, let's just like, just leave. It's just because he's yeah. at City and City was so good the last four or five seasons. It's like, oh come on. Let's not make this a farm. Yeah. Like, let's and not think, make this an uncompetitive division. Come on. Well, that's it. I think our worst fears have come true with it as well because I think a lot of us did have more hopes than educated thoughts about him joining that city system and thinking, oh, yeah, maybe he won't get it. Maybe he'll just get injured, things like this. He won't hit the ground running. Uh, the sad reality is the system's working just fine and he fits <laughs> it like a glove and he scored this many goals so far. And it, we're at a point now where we're... I've got to sit back at this point and think if the season's truly over, the golden boot race is over, things like this, maybe I should just enjoy what history I think I might be about to see. Yeah. And and I think that's the only thing getting me through it, to be honest, is if I see him hit 50, which wouldn't surprise me at this point, I don't even think I'd bat an eyelid, but if I see him and then at the end of the season, I go, he scored 50 goals, and you think, the thing. Wow. That- I think I think in his contract though he has a re- release clause. I think that's what was put in there. Mm. So I think the aim is now to go to Real Madrid in a couple of seasons. So I think what will happen it will be a case of he'll get all these records, but he won't get like the big one as in like Alan Shearer, Harry Kane esque. Yeah. Um, but what a sight it will be! You know, it'll be one of them players that are just like Rude van Nistelrooy esque, just like boop, boop. you know, like. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. Do you think if? If Haaland was in any of those former teams, he'd do as well. Like, would you think he? Do you think he would do well at a, like a Man United when Rudra was there, or or a Thierry Henry went in that in that invincible season? Do you think? Do you think? Do you think this City team suits him so perfectly, or is it the case of he's so good? After listening to Pep himself and a couple of players in their interviews, my biggest fear is that I don't think he currently fits in to the team or the setup. It's more, obviously, with lack of touches says one thing. Um, And it seems to be, at this point, they aren't entirely familiar with him. They haven't figured him out properly, how they could utilise him, which sounds silly with the goal return. But um, it's almost like maybe... You look at Jack Grealish. Jack Grealish at Aston Villa, what he did, pulling the strings in that team, being the best player. Uh, Harlan's joined this team. He's come straight in, scored a great amount of goals. But it's like, it's almost like the way they speak in the interviews is that, no, actually, we want him to be doing something. Obviously, this is brilliantly scoring goals, but he's not quite bought into what we're doing yet. And I think, what oh my the hell do you, you have planned for him? <laughs> yeah, what either, do you want that, him to do? Or either that, or don't ruin it. Like, just yeah, keep yeah, it going. Yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it's, it's strange because looking at Manchester City with a centre-forward in itself is strange. Uh, I remember when we played them in the Community Shield uh at the start of the season, it didn't look right at all, and it obviously didn't work. Yeah, uh, and we managed to get the win. But um, us as well, with you know, with Darwin, who hasn't started in in that same vein as early in Haaland. But um, I looked at the start and I thought, oh, this might be a problem for City. They might take some serious getting used to this centre forward here. Uh, and I was wrong, and they have absolutely fly- <laughs> flown through it. I don't think I don't I don't I don't think it'll be as 
as strong as this because they I, who have they played Wolves Villa have they played anyone not West Ham uh, West Ham that yeah. need to sort themselves out yeah, uh, I'm trying to make again I'm trying to make excuses for Haaland not doing too well <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah he's an absolute freak yeah, yeah. now Cal we're going to go on to this next little bit and um, this is something that you brought to us so we were in the chat the other day and uh, obviously brought up a question. We were a little bit bevied, I will say, but we, nice. um, there's a question that I brought to you because as a Blackman fan, obviously I can go to a game every week. And I, what, what was the, what was the question? In, what was the actual question? It was mainly, uh, I was talking about being a Liverpool fan, not being able to go as much as I'd like to and things like this. And uh, I remember you saying to me, and it was really poignant, it hit me properly. Uh, you said, do you think you've missed out on the general love of being a football fan. And I sat back for a minute and I thought, wow, what a question that is. And my answer was, yeah. And so this will lead us into this feature. It was something that I'd thought about before we'd even spoke about doing a podcast, but it linked in beautifully after we was having these meetings, post-pod meetings about yeah, yeah. the next one and where yeah. we can go. And then um, I'd been thinking for a while, my local, t- my local team is Warrington Town. They're just down the road. Uh, they're in the league below the Vanarama North. Oh, right. They lost in the playoff final. They'd have been in FM23, but Scarsborough. Fuck. <laughs> but, so they're, they're doing well. They're you know, a good little team in that, and they've got every chance of going up again this year. Um, and I've been thinking about it for ages. I thought, why well, have I never been there? Um, never been to the ground, never you know, gone for a game and enjoyed it. Uh, they have a beautiful little bar set up there and everything with all the afternoon fixtures on. Uh, and I've been thinking for a while, I'm going to go and do it. And uh, this podcast just, and that question really, though, made me think, yeah, I'm going to do it. So um, I bought a ticket to go and watch Warrington Town this coming Saturday. They uh, are playing uh, FC United at okay. home. Do you, know the hist- Park. do you know the history of FC United? I do, and uh, yeah, you know, yeah. as a Liverpool fan, I think it'll be a great intro yeah. for me to to yeah. want to beat them. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, but no, obviously, um, you know, a good little team themselves. They, you know, have loads of promotions over the Money years well. that they've been there, and um, so yeah, I just thought, well, I could talk about it till I'm blue in the face, but yeah, there's a difference between that and then going and doing it. So I've bought my ticket. Uh, luckily, I've got a friend. Uh, who's going to come with me on the weekend? If not, but beforehand, if not, just let me know. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, you can come if you want, mate. By all means. Yeah. But we was, um, I was going to go on my own, and then he said, "Yeah, I'm up for that." Sounds good. So obviously, mm. it'd be brilliant having a mate there with me. I'm going to document it for this pod oh, and okay. let you know how it goes um, afterwards. But I'm really excited because you know I know the place, um, and it'll be my first experience in non-league football that isn't. You know, Saturday League, FC Burton Wood stuff. And, yeah, know, yeah. It's not yeah. even anywhere near. Competitive, not far off league football. I'm, I'm really excited. And yeah, so FC United at Cantilever Park on Saturday, three o'clock. So I'm good to see go. You, see you there then. See you. Yeah. Carl Nickel, <laughs> live and direct there. Like, that's it. <laughs> um, that's uh, So you've never been to an non-league game before, probably like one of them high ones. No, I think. Well, I was speaking to uh, I was speaking to my dad. I think it's a couple of divisions below, but uh, right. I was a mascot for Prescott Cables when I was okay. a really young yeah. kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my dad had sponsored them or something. I think there are a few divisions below, and uh, yes, yeah, so I was a mascot for them. I can't remember it at all. No, but um, yeah, so this will be the first time where I can go and you know have a pint and a pie, and you know, it's do, a lot more chill than you used to. I suppose there won't be any like uh, you can go whatever stand you want. Like it's it's a very yeah. 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 Um, I remember when I was growing up, um, Accrington Stanley, the, the sort of town I live in is Accrington at the time. Uh, I was born in Blackburn, so that allows me to support them. Uh, but Accrington at the time were in the division that uh, that Warrington were in, actually, um, the, the Uniborn Premier at the time. So I'm guessing it's the Northern Premier. Is that it? Like? Is that's yeah, the yeah. one, yeah. Yeah, so Northern Premier, Accrington, and also Burton Albion were in that league at the time as well. Wow. And um, John Coleman was still the manager in 2002, I think. Um, I used to watch them all the time every weekend. And it was class. It was good. They used to have a... I remember the first week I went, uh, they had a raffle. Do you want to guess what the raffle prize was? <laughs> I couldn't imagine that. Go on, tell me. Five pound of sausages. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's brilliant. Yeah, and I remember watching this against Telford FC and we lost 5-1. And, but, you know, it, it's the little things like that that hooks you to football and it cost a pound a game, something like that. And, and it was, I ended up playing for the sort of academy at the time. And it was, you know, I was involved in all that sort of thing. So, you know, non-league as, a, you know, it's not the quality isn't there, but the community is there. And mm. that's what you'll realise when you go. I think that's what you'll you'll find out. Um, everyone knows everyone, sort of thing. And even if even if you feel like a bit of an outsider, I don't think you will after a game. You will enjoy it. I think I think you'll uh, you'll find out this sort of little niche uh, talks rather than uh, everyone. Every, to be honest with you, everyone's there is either like a Liverpool or a United fan, but they just yeah. they love, they love yeah. Warrington FC as well. So I think you'll love that's it. it. Yeah, I can't wait to be honest with you. Um, I've you know, I talked myself into doing it uh, and what a perfect way to start. I'm look, looking forward to it. I looked at the league table and, you know, Warrington's doing all right. So I'm going to put my I'm going to put my stamp down now that I'm a, a Warrington Town fan as well as I am a Liverpool fan and I'm, yeah. you know, I'm ready to go. And uh, I've been following him for a few weeks. I've got him on flash scores and uh, yeah. got beat this weekend. Hyde beat them in the cup, uh, I think. Cup, okay. cup. Oh, the uh, second qualifier. Yeah, round. preliminary. Yeah, so uh, not great, but... FC United at the weekend and a promotion push, hopefully, that I can get behind. Yeah, and, and and I think for me personally, I think what's weird for me is that when I started following Accrington in the Northern Premier, Blackburn were fifth in the Premier League. And now yeah. they're and now they're one division between each other, which is insane Crazy. to think. Like I, I, I think I think now if I started sport, if I was back then and they were in the divisions they were, I think I would be an Accrington fan, to be honest with you, because that would be the team that I went, I went to first. But it, you just can't, there's nobody, there's nothing to follow, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Whereas you go to the big stadium of Blackburn, it's like, wow, like it's just the, when you're a child, that's what you want to go for. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, I think that's the the thing for me is, is you know, the situation at Liverpool is pretty, you know, notable that um, it's hard to get a ticket yeah, and, uh, exactly. That's what it is. Luckily, yeah. I, th- I think there's a chance. I've heard from a friend. I think there's a chance I might be able to get a couple of games this season. Which that's mental. Is that is that is mental though. That, I've never thought of that in my life. To be yeah, honest. exactly. In my in my own head, and that's probably why I asked you. I was like, have you ever like properly experienced like game day after game day after game day? Because no. I can just I can have a season ticket without having a season ticket. I can just go out every game, like, without yeah. a fail. And I went to the Blackburn Hartlepool game a few se- a few weeks ago just by myself, just sat there, and there was 10,000 fans in a 30,000-seater stadium. It was... It's just... It's just the it's just, day, though, isn't just, it? And yeah. I'm looking forward to, because I know a couple of pubs, uh, a couple of the pubs that are around there. Yes. And, you know, going to them before... The plan is, we've got a plan. We've got two pubs that we like that we're going to go to before. And we're going to walk down to Cantilever, obviously, watch the game, and then sit in the supporters' pub yep. uh, after. And then, you know, see where the day goes from there. But They're uh, the best days. They are the best. That's it. I'm and, and, I, and to be honest, going to watch Liverpool, it always just seems that little bit more hectic. Obviously, you're in a big city, you're in a ground that's full of you know 50 odd thousand people it's like it's just a bit more of a hectic experience what i'm looking forward to is to be able to go i will right, we'll do this then we'll do that and then have oh, we never done game. have we never done something like that not so at that every, level no. every every row is every row every blackman game i go to we go to like mm. a, we go to like a pub before a couple of pints like by my by where i live then we get yeah. a taxi to a pub nearby it's not like it's fine you know like you have like whatever how many whatever how many you want yeah, yeah. that was one outside the ground, just stood there, absolutely fine. Go inside, watch championship football, have a couple of, like you know, like you, you make a full day of it, and then afterwards you go into the blues bar, which is which is the ground, and then you go wherever you want afterwards. It's just yeah. it's so calm, it's so easy, and I can't never get my head around these top teams that have these like 50,000, 60,000, and yeah. it's just like no access anywhere. You can't do anything. I'm like, well, I can't yeah, what? <laughs> Well, that's it. I think the last few seasons sort of lost, be, not being able to go and not being able to find a ticket. You know, I've got friends that I've been lucky enough to find tickets and, and I, listen, you can do it. you just yeah. got to be in the right places and know the right people and, you know, on Twitter and things like this. But um, no, I'm thoroughly looking forward to it. And I feel like it's going to be something that I think it's yeah. going to hook me from there. Yes, on. I think it might do, you know. Right, so I think next up, we're going to talk about the England shirts and Carl... Let's talk about them, England shirts. Jesus Christ. I think I think our faces and our reactions say it all. 
really. Um, should we go from shit to shit? Is that is that the sound thing to do right now? Because there are. Can. Both... I mean, the first one we've got a lovely Harry Kane holding yeah. a holding a football. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. What do you In think? Shirt. What do you think <laughs> of it? Uh, do, do, I... do you want me to give my opinion? To start off. Go on, you can start. I'll, the I'll first thing, the first thing to compare the home and away. I've got them up here on the screen right now. I'm not a fan of the different colours. Yeah, you know they just they look like different era football, and one looks like the home shirt looks like an away uh, like a trading top. Yeah, the away shirt's fine. It's fine, but it it. Do you know what this screams to me personally? We struggle in the group stage. And we just sort of get out on penalties in the last 16. Yeah. That's it, what it screams at me. It does, doesn't it? And I think that is fair to look at a shirt because it, it just takes you back. That it's, It is one of the biggest things from a tournament. You'd think of the shirt and you think of, you know, if the shirt's iconic, if it's not, and obviously you can go all the way back to 66 and you look at that shirt. I have an opinion on England shirts and they always have. You look at that 1966 shirt, which we won it, which is one of the greatest moments in English football history. Someone tell me, obviously, you can change the material and things like that. Why can't it just be that? Every Why can't time. you just have that every yeah. time? Does it, you don't Literally, a white, a white shirt with an England badge. And if it's sponsored by Nike, all right, have a tick there. And then you have your numbers, things like this. Why don't you just have the exact same thing with, obviously, your new... Gener- generational materials, things like this, that'll help out the athletes, things like that. But I just, I've never understood it. I think it's trying to be, every time it's inviting scrutiny because we mastered it in 1966 by having a white shirt with an England badge on it, with three lions on it. And then we had a red one with three lions on it. It's as simple as that. And I think we got it right last year. The, the year was just gone with the, the number in the middle. And yeah. it's just the sim- the more simple you have it, the better. And I think they've gone a bit exactly. And I th- I feel like two teams have gone off and just made their own designs. Like I said, the, the different mm. colours it, it annoys me. The the sort of my OCDness of it all, like it just very much annoys me. And it yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. And like like you know, so what <laughs> if you're gonna rate it? If you're gonna grade it, A to F. Oh God, I genuinely I feel awful saying it because I know someone's probably spent the their life's work thinking about it, but F, it's yeah. it's it genuinely is rubbish. And I remember when it came out, uh, the first leak, it was ages ago, wasn't it? And I was like, it's never gonna be that. Don't worry, it won't be I don't that. even remember that. I'd, and, I'd, I'd like yeah, to there was there was a leak and it was like a you know when like all our club shirts leak and it's like a 3D model, it's not even the like an actual kit on a person and yeah. it was a 3d model of it i was like there's no chance there's absolutely no way they've got that one wrong i'll ignore it and we'll go again and we'll find a nice lovely kit heading up towards the world cup but no it's here and it's horrific. terrible it is simply horrific and i don't even think winning the world cup would be in a nice kit, <laughs> i don't want you know? to win the world cup with that <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bring, i think you know i think hopefully hopefully we go for the red one because out of the two the red no, one what is they need a to lot do. nicer but what they need to do is just bring back the 2020 shirt yeah. and just put that yeah. on them. But I liked, I liked the Lionesses shirt for the Euros was that simple. I've got it up here now. It was the simple uh, white shirt, obviously, yeah. but then the logo had that, um, I can't even think of the word for it, but it was like multicolored. It was, it was really cool and it had that effect to it. And I thought, yeah. how simple and cool is that? It's minimalistic. It works. This, I just, I'm looking at it now. I, why? I know it's it's apparently it's a throwback to is it the it's not the Gaza shirt what? is it, is it the, the it's, what it's though throwback. The what though we, we, the, what throwback we've done better than oh them. yeah well yeah done exactly we've not, yeah done better than them. What throwback <laughs> there was a kit that had the the turquoise and the dark blue with the with the white obviously and they've gone for know, that right. but I just think yeah, that was like 1990 I don't know maybe I don't know if it's because it fits so bad on the on the person wearing it it's not a good start it's not a good start whatever it is no and god i just can't find any the away kit grows on me every time i look at it It that's the one one i actually liked yes that is that but why can't the home one have a collar like that i think it'd add tenfold to it if it had a collar on it that is the first strange neck on it that just 
And the new Liverpool kit has a neck like that, but it works fine because it's just fucking red. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, a, it's not got these weird. Oh god, I, I could go that's, on all night. I about think that's it. the that's the main issue that I have. It's just the different colours. Like, what is mm. going on? Like, why? What are you doing? Like what? You, Nike make the worst kits. They do hands down. They make the worst kits. Yeah, and but then and there's times where they will crack it. But um, <laughs> but, um I, I'm looking at that away kit now on Phil Foden. I think that's not a bad kit at all. Yeah, um, it think- doesn't scream anything at me. But the shorts are shit. Yeah, they actually, yeah, I think the shorts have got to be navy or something, haven't they? They've got to be thinner. Do you know what I mean? They've got to be thinner. Yeah, I don't know what just... they don't look. They don't like the the swim shorts. Yeah, it everything about it just screams like you've just had such a memorable uh, summer last year. Yeah, uh, got to the final. You think you want your kit to be, you know, something that people look at and go, "Wow, that is class." Also, and everything about it is not class. Last thought: Phil Foden doesn't take a throw in. That's what I'll say. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Right, okay. <laughs> And now we're going to our, what I think our favourite segment will be, to be honest with you. Last week it came... I never, did you know that I was going to do that jingle last week? No, but I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Nonetheless. Right, Cal, have you got your choice? I have my choice. And we've got a little surprise for you guys afterwards, after this uh, little uh, segment. So, are you ready? Ready. You go first. You remember that? Always. Random footballer of the week. Amir Zaki. Thomas Redzinski. Random footballer of the week. Moving on? No, not moving on. <laughs> what we've got for you guys right now from this. So what was yours? Amiyazaki. Amiyazaki, yes. It's Thomas Radzinski. We're going to put it on a poll on Twitter, guys, right? And next week, we're going we're gonna to start off with... I think next week's going to be our first... Proper? Ep- proper episode. Well, that's yes. exclusive. If you got this far, in, you'll know. Um... <laughs> Whoever wins that one, Thomas Rosinski, will uh, be a <laughs> will be the in, uh, inaugural. Oh God, how do you say it? inaugural? Inaugural, inaugural, mm. inaugural um, player in our random footballer of the week, and we'll we'll display it. We'll display it. We'll display it right here, just before it. Now we're going to move on to Gammon Thoughts. Now, Cal, we're back with Gammon Thoughts. Back. And this is uh, this is a beautiful one for me. I do love it. I, I yes. can't lie. I love I've it. I've got a jingle as well. Do you, do you remember my jingle last week? How terrible. I do. You yeah. re- do re- you remember this jingle? <laughs> Go on then. Gammon thoughts, not quite Brexit, but if you haven't hit in the crowd, then you want to exit. It's Gammon thoughts. It's, oof, ah, it's, it's summer. It's, it's something. Is that okay? It's okay. It's got a message. <laughs> Did I say it right? There's more thought and purpose than last week, anyway. Uh, I am going to kick off Gammon Thoughts with a listener comment. We had one, which we always love. What's he called? We What's he called? What's the got one last called? week from Liam from Brighton, who came in with a Gammon Thought on our YouTube. Yes. This one was from Twitter, which okay. is brilliant, and it, it did make me laugh. Uh, this is from Stephen Sheridan, who comes from... God's country, Burton Wood, and his comment. <laughs> it just took me because I've heard it a million times before. Uh, when you think to yourself, this game just needs a goal. Well, yeah, that's pretty obvious. Neither team are going out to get a nil-nil <laughs> draw. Not this nil-nil when you're four nil down and trying to boost team morale by claiming it is. <laughs> I just remember. <laughs> I quote tweeted it on the account and I said, "I that's really like, like this." That's one. like the opposite. Just, it that's... took me back to um, to the. Peep show quote. <laughs> it's just a quote there from uh, from David Mitchell. And he says, "I think they're trying." <laughs> just took me straight back to that. That's uh, yeah, like the op- that that quote that that we, this game needs a goal is like the opposite of uh, 
nil nil boys nil nil that's like the opposite of it that's yeah. like the opposite gammon like it's weird but that that's the same thought as like do you know again when a game's like two nil and it's like oh the next goal decides it it's like yeah of course yeah. it fucking does like you just- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because if it's three, it's over. If there's another goal for the other yes. team, it's well done. A goal decides a game. Well played. Yeah. <laughs> it's so true, and it's so easy, and it happens every week. These are my favourite. I think the last two weeks, obviously having Liam and Stephen now, thank you for the saying comment. these. Yeah, thank you both for these comments because I love how the innocence of them. Because you could literally hear it every week, exactly. every game. It just happens. If you hear it in the crowd, then you want to exit. That's it. Let's get the check. <laughs> we'll make a proper recorded jingle of it one I day. I couldn't have sounded more white if I tried. <laughs> but yes, I that is definitely going into that the Gammon is, Thoughts. Proper. Like I said last week, this is exactly what we said about Gammon Thoughts. Like this is exactly yes. what we thought. And it, it, he's put it he, he's nailed it exactly. Is it what was his name, sorry? Stephen Sheridan. Stephen Sheridan. He's absolutely absolutely nailed it on the head, hasn't he? With the gammon thought. Like it's just yeah. anything in the crowd where you, you'll hear it. You'll hear it in Warrington. You'll hear it. You'll be yeah. like, oh. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm gonna have some fucking <laughs> content after that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I made up with it and yeah, a brilliant entry into gammon thoughts. Dom, anything to add? Um, I think it's more more of a case of um Pie talk. I think I think people love talking about pies when it's gammon thoughts. They just they love to compare about pies. Like, oh, you know what I mean? You mean a potato pie? Oh, it's a stick pepper steak pie. I, I think they love talking about food rather than the game. I think I think that's just the general chit chat in the in the in the in the concourse. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, if, if like I say, it's not it's not just to do with football guys. It's to do with anything in life. If you hear any gammon thoughts, like. Oh God, it's it's not quite Brexit. I think that's the <laughs> <laughs> true, we're towing a line here, aren't we? And it's um, but any comments will be appreciated, like we say every single week. Definitely. Now, and you get a shout out as the last two I've proven. And uh, yeah, Stephen Sheridan and Liam Vickery has found out you do get a shout out, and you'll probably get a shout out next week because there'll be a third person to add to this list. Yes. However, <laughs> I'm worried that Gammon Thoughts will be. Uh... <laughs> A one appearance in the main part, oh. of it, and that's it. <laughs> we can hope anyway. Something that's Hopefully. not going to be a one appearance in the pod is our our new segment, which is not yes. Nick of the Week. It is Nonsense Hall of Fame. Yes, yes. Excited about this one. I think Nick of the Week was a good little starting point, and it ran yes. its course. However, and its course was two weeks long. However. <laughs> <laughs> I think we, we were a bit too cynical with that. I think that the, the mm. fact that Nick of the Week was a bit too like, uh, we're pushing someone down where we need to be pushing somebody, like we're punching up, we're punching up, aren't we, rather than punching down. We're nonsense yes. Hall of Fame, where it's just whatever nonsense you want to talk about, like whatever nonsense happened this week, whatever nonsense happened in the, the world, whatever that nonsense happened in the last decade, you know, it, it's whatever nonsense you want. And I think what we're going to do right now is we're both going to put a nonsense um hall of fame entry in and you guys are going to decide on this on a poll on our twitter on our twitter account so cal who wants to start this do you want me to start uh you can start if you'd like my friend okay (laughs) (laughs) so the last four years have been quite a turbulent four years just not in life but in well, in in what we're talking about is football right now. In life in general, we've had COVID. You know, we've had we've had Boris. We've had um, we we've had Joe back. We've had Donald Trump. For God's sake, you know, we're going through a bloody recession almost. But it's been yeah. one constant, and that is the man at the back for England Football Club. This man, <laughs> this man has gone through it all, and he's gone through the turbulence of Manchester United in their, in their, in their drops. You'd say in their absolute anti peaks. Yeah. 
Peril. And he's, <laughs> and he's peril. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the same thing. <laughs> I don't know English that well. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> this man has a big forehead. <laughs> But my 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 Hall of Fame nominee will be Harry Maguire, and this is this is the reason why because he's gone through so much shit. He's gone so gone through so much turbulence and so much animosity on social media, from the presenters, from TV, from pundits, from radio, from us, you know, on YouTube. Yeah, he's somehow somehow through it all. Still got in that England squad. Now, still there. <laughs> this is nonsense. And he shall be in the Hall of Fame. I rest my case. I like it. I like the uh, the innocence of it. because <laughs> There's many ways you can look at Harry Maguire, and there is a one that you feel very sorry for the fellow, and we touched on it last week. And um, I went on a different angle this time. I'm thinking Hall of Fame, and I'm thinking there's probably one time ever in my life where I could see a versus in between Harry Maguire and the great Hugh Edwards. <laughs> so, I, a bit of background. <laughs> I, uh, I, <laughs> I, I studied journalism at university and um, managed to get a degree in it. So I watch a lot of news here and there, it's mainly sports news, but here and there, you, you see a lot of people and some of them are just brilliant at what they do in this, this past week. You can't prepare for what he's had to do this past week. And, he, you know, he's been non-stop on the TV and he's absolutely nailed every minute of it. And I saw a tweet before, and I think this is, <laughs> this is why it categorises in this, what we're trying to do. Um, <laughs> the tweet said, uh, I wonder if when Hugh Edwards goes home, he just keeps narrating... <laughs> <laughs> so here is the tea bag, and they will go. What is it? Is he Welsh? Uh, Welsh? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Go on, uh, go on, no, wait. Gives you so, Welsh, Welsh. Gives you Welsh. Well, well, uh, so here is the tea bag, and it will go into the tea, and uh, we it's sit a here and, and uh, we are waiting for an official announcement. But we see the tea, and it's entering the bag, and the milk, which is one of Her Majesty's finest favorite things, will enter the tea, and. Then I will go to bed. And I saw this you and I thought, wow, that is, I, I literally can imagine exactly Hugh Edwards leaving the studio, going to home, getting into his house, saying hello to everyone in the house, and then sitting there and thinking, he can't switch off. So he's just hello. there narrating everything. Yeah, <laughs> hello tonight for dinner. We've got a, got yeah. a chicken dinner. with <laughs> Exactly. So I was like, and then I've watched him and obviously I watched him today with um, the Queen's funeral and, He's been on so much and done it so much. I thought, fair play to the guy. He's probably not had a wink sleep and, you know, does a great job. So in a different light, uh, but also I thought it'd be really funny to have Harry Maguire <laughs> against Sue Edwards. So um, I don't know which head wins that battle. <laughs> but My God. Our I listeners think, think will the, decide. <laughs> it's the nonsense Hall of Fame, guys. So... I think the best thing to do right now is who's going to win a fight in a pub? And it's a tough one, that one, isn't it? It is a tough one. That is an immovable object versus an unstoppable force. Yeah. Nah, <laughs> who's going to win that one, to be honest with you? I think we put it to the listeners uh, on a quick Twitter poll and yes, see how we'll that one ends up. Whoever wins it, however, will enter a forever standing Hall of Fame within the pod and will be there forever. We might give him a clap next week. Yeah, and um, be they'll weird. be there in well, a nice, lovely frame. What I've visioned in my head is a nice little golden frame on top of. The, obviously, they'll be the first ones. So yes, nice yeah, because R.I.P. Graham Potter and Graham, no Gareth Southgate's yeah, style stylist. <laughs> Fair play to them, but they didn't quite make the yeah. bill. And yeah, listen, it is how it is, and they might yeah. feature there one day. There's no reason why not. If we crash out of the World Cup early and Gareth Southgate's in. God forbid the tracksuit, it's over for Gareth Southgate's stylist, and exactly. they are entering. And he that is hall. entering that hall of fame, and then God forbid when when in the inevitable happens and Graham yeah. Potter gets sacked <laughs> in three months' time, and <laughs> <laughs> he might be there too. So never say never. Never say never. But sorry, guys, your we'll turn hasn't you. come yet. So, guys, remember we've got the random hall, random football of the week as a poll, and we've got. Nonsense Hall of Fame. 
Harry Maguire versus Hugh Edwards. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> Great, isn't it? Um, yeah. And I think that's I think that's a wrap, isn't it? I think that's I think that's our pod done. And and how were you feeling over preseason, Cal? Because obviously, in the next episode is going to be our our first game of the season. So, are you ready for yeah. it? Do you know what? I'm really glad that we did this. How we did it, and yeah, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I've thought about it all the time, and it's you know it's been really good for the mind, like to get into something, get stuck into something like this. I'm really glad that we've. Decided to go with pre-season episodes. Um, yeah, they're not wasted, I, are they? Exactly. And it's got us up to speed with it. And it's good to see people jumping on board already. Yeah. Um, but even if, even if they don't like it, it's just fun to get out. and. That's it, of course. And, and obviously, it's growing and growing. It'll continue to grow. Uh, people will continue to, to share it. And uh, do you know what I am feeling right now is really, really ready to get right stuck into it. That's what I'm getting so, ready for. Um, who are you hoping for first season? Oh, guests. No, I meant just in teams. Like, but we do have guests involved uh, we soon, don't we? we? Yeah, that's the thing. We have how many? How many guests do we have linked up? Do you think? I think we have about three, or, three four. or four already. Three that four. Are hoping up for it. One's really intriguing. One I don't really know much about, but you know a lot about, which I'm yes. really excited for. Um, yes. All will be revealed. I think what what it is worth saying is, um, obviously, to anyone who's got to this point, thank you very much for listening. Yeah, by the uh, way, why are you here? Yeah. <laughs> but thank you. But thank you. And uh, we have so much lined up. We have, you know, ideas every day that are we going do. through. We are talking to each other every day, aren't we? We're talking about yeah. the bits. And, like, Gavin Thoughts is here right now, but, like I say, it probably won't be a lasting segment. We've got bits coming every every other day. The football speaks for itself, but the last half, like we say, is down to you guys, and it always stems from the community, always stems from you guys, the comments below. Hopefully we'll get to a stage where we can get we can we can hope like you know, we can vibe off you guys and make bits from there, can't we? That that's what I'm thinking. That's it, and it that's what it all depends on is that we have these ideas now, and I feel like there's going to be some podcasts in the next few weeks that you're really going to enjoy, and it'll teach you a thing or two about certain people that you might not know much about or certain things, yep. uh, how things work in different realms of football and in life. So we've got things planned, but as Dom says, you've, you're a massive part of this, and if you can help us in any way, it'll be so appreciated. So my final point, Dom, would be guys like subscribe, please, and leave a comment and just get involved in general on Twitter, on TikTok, on anywhere. We're going to be more active on all platforms as of now. Uh, pre-season is, well, well over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've it. done our final match and we, we know our formation. Next week is going to be the big one. The yep. episode one of the season. Like, just, like Cal just said, you know, Cal, where can we find you on any platform? Uh, so you can find me personally. I'm at Callum Nickel on t- Twitter uh, and the same on Instagram. But the big one that I want to push right now is our social media for our pod, which exactly. is uh, the Talk Nonsense Pod on everything bar Instagram. Said it last time. Some absolute moron decided to should take be, It should be in the overlay. It should be in yeah. the overlay anyway. But it will follow be. it, guys, because we will. Yeah. What we will. What we what we discussed beforehand. Is we're just gonna talk nonsense on there, whatever we want, even when we're pissed at like four a.m. We're just gonna yep. throw anything out. So hopefully, you guys can, you know, at four a.m. You might actually get a reply. To be fair, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, please subscribe to this channel as well. This is my own personal channel, obviously, but we're gonna make a proper YouTube channel for this um, eventually. Uh, I'm not, I'm not sure when. Maybe the first first episode is that. Is that yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty much set up now, but we will get to that when it comes we'll, to it. Yeah, we'll For get now, to that when it comes to our base. Yep. Yeah. Uh, please like this cut, like this video, guys. I, I do appreciate all the likes and and the views and the comments that are coming in recently. I I, I mean, it's 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 a, it's a snowball effect, and I'm loving it, guys. So, Cal, it's been a good one, hasn't it? Yeah, I can't believe preseason's over. I'm excited <laughs> now. I've got the butterfly. Get the butterflies going. <laughs> I mean, we never walk alone going down that tunnel, you know. That's the one. Um, And um, 
thanks for watching, guys. I, I, I'm, uh, if you're at this stage, my God, you guys are the real ones. Peace, guys. I'll see you later. Thank you.